Okay, so welcome to this next video uh, in the playlist on G-protein coupled receptors. Okay, so in this video what we're going to talk about is the stimulation and inhibition of adenylyl cyclase enzymes by G-protein coupled receptor heterotrimeric G-proteins. Okay, so uh, what we want to first start off with is discussing adenylyl cyclase enzymes um, and then what we'll do is we'll go back to the G-protein coupled receptors, we'll have a little bit of discussion of G-protein coupled receptors, a little bit of revision, uh, then we'll talk about heterotrimeric G-proteins and then we'll look at the different heterotrimeric G-proteins which regulate the function uh, of the adenylyl cyclase enzymes. Okay, right. So the topic for this video then is heterotrimeric G proteins and adenylyl cyclases. So heterotrimeric G proteins and adenylyl cyclases. Right, and I'll just abbreviate. Oh, actually, I know. I'll write adenylyl cyclases out in full. Adenylyl and then cyclases. Right, so. Um, let's start off then with the structure of adenylyl cyclases. Uh, we'll then talk about the classification of adenylyl cyclases because there are nine different adenylyl cyclases and they're classified into uh, four different groups. Okay, we'll then talk about uh, the um, activation of adenylyl cyclases and the reaction that they catalyze. Okay, so we'll start off with the structure of an adenylyl cyclase enzyme then. So basically, adenylyl cyclase enzymes are integral membrane proteins. They are attached to the plasma membrane, but more than that, they're actually integrated into it. They have two uh, special transmembrane domains, each consisting of six membrane-spanning alpha helices. So let me show this to you. So the amino terminus of the adenylyl cyclase enzyme is on the cytoplasmic side of the membrane. So this side here is the cytoplasmic side of the plasma membrane, okay? And this side over here is the extracellular fluid, the ECF. Okay, so the amino terminus is on the cytoplasmic side. Then you have a membrane spanning alpha helix which crosses the plasma membrane. Then uh, it loops back around, second membrane spanning alpha helix, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, to make these six membrane spanning alpha helices which bundle together. And this whole bundle of six membrane spanning alpha helices is called the transmembrane domain, the TMD1. Okay, then you have a loop between this and the next transmembrane domain, which is called transmembrane domain 2, which again consists of six membrane spanning alpha helices all bunched together. So this is transmembrane domain 2. Okay, and then on the cytoplasmic side, you then have uh, the carboxylic acid tail. Okay, so these two portions, this loop between transmembrane domain 1 and transmembrane domain 2, and also this carboxylic acid tail here, these are very, very important. So they're so important, they're given their own name. So the loop between transmembrane domain 1 and transmembrane domain 2 is called C1, okay, or the C1 domain. And the portion after transmembrane domain 2 here, this is known as the C2 domain. So we have the C1 domain and the C2 domain. And both of these domains are then broken up further into two separate subdomains, if you like. So C1 is broken up into C1A here, and then C1B here. And C2, similarly, is broken up into C2A, which is the portion closer to the transmembrane domain 2, and then this portion here, which is C2B. Okay, right. Uh, so this is the structure of the adenylyl cyclase enzyme. Now, which portion is the actual active enzyme? Well, even though the transmembrane domain portions look mightily impressive, they are the bit that, you know, draws your eyes. The rest of it just looks accessory to the um, transmembrane domains. Well, actually, the transmembrane domains are accessory to these bits down here. They are just to implant the whole thing uh, at the plasma membrane. It is the C1A domain here and the C2A domain, which are the active uh, enzyme, basically, which is going to catalyze uh, the adenylyl cyclase reaction. 
Okay, now you might be thinking, oh, so do you have two active enzymes within this? No. What has to happen is this C1A domain here has to dimerize with the C2A. So both of those have to come together, bind together, and then that bound C1A and C2A will then be an active adenylyl cyclase enzyme. So what I've drawn here is actually the inactive enzyme. Let me now draw you the active version. Okay, so here we have the amino terminus here. Okay. Then we have uh, the six membrane spanning alpha helices, like so, uh, the um, C1 loop. Then we have another six membrane spanning alpha helices, making up transmembrane domain two here. And then we have the C2 domain. And of course, I've got to now somehow show C2A here dimerized with C1A here. So I've had to stretch it out a bit to try and show this, but uh, the message I hope is clear that C1A and C2A are joining together. So here's C1A, here's C2A here. And they join together like so uh, to create the active enzyme, okay? So you've got now one active enzyme here. So this now is the active adenylyl cyclase. And adenylyl cyclases are often just abbreviated to ACs. Now, once you've got this active enzyme, what does it actually catalyze? What well, catalyzes the cyclase reaction? It catalyzes the conversion of adenosine triphosphate, ATP, into cyclic adenosine monophosphate, CYCAMP, uh, and pyrophosphate. Okay, so let me show this. So, we're going to start off with adenosine triphosphate, and I'll draw you out a little cartoon for adenosine triphosphate. So basically, adenosine triphosphate is an adenosine molecule with three phosphate groups stuck off it. So for that to be useful, however, we need to know what is an adenosine molecule. And basically, adenosine is adenine bound to ribose. Okay, so you take a ribose sugar, and note it is ribose, not deoxyribose. It's the sugar that you have in RNA, not DNA. So ribose is this pentamer, uh, and then it has a fifth carbon coming off up here. Okay, so I'll, that, that's my cartoon for ribose, and I'll colour it in in blue here. And basically, if you bind ribose to the organic base adenine, which I'm just going to show as a rectangle, okay, um, then that is what is known as adenosine. So adenosine means adenine plus ribose, as I've shown here. So I'll just cover the organic base adenine in turquoise here. Right, so adenosine is ribose plus adenine. So here is adenine labelled up, and now we have ribose in blue here. Right, so if you add ribose to adenosine, sorry, to adenine, you then get adenosine. Right, so if we want adenosine triphosphate, we want three phosphate groups added onto this molecule that we've created so far. So let's stick three phosphate groups on one, two, three phosphate groups. Okay, and they come off this fifth carbon of ribose up here. So if the fifth carbon of ribose has an alcohol group coming off it, and you can link uh, this first phosphate group onto that alcohol group via what's known as a phosphoester link, uh, then you can add some more phosphate groups onto uh, the phosphate group that's already added until you've got three of them, and then you've got adenosine triphosphate. So basically what the active adenylyl cyclase is then going to do is it's going to take in the adenosine triphosphate molecules and it's going to break them down into something that's called cyclic adenosine monophosphate. Okay, and for short, cyclic adenosine monophosphate is usually abbreviated to CAMP. So C for cyclic, A for adenosine, and then the M uh, P is for monophosphate. Right, okay, so if we didn't have the cyclic there, if we just had adenosine monophosphate, that would be easy. We know what adenosine is. Monophosphate just means one phosphate, so that would just be, uh, you know, this molecule here with only one of the phosphates rather than three. 
Okay, but cyclic adenosine monophosphate is slightly more complicated. So what we're going to do is we are going to cut off these terminal two phosphates here. And I should just say that there is a naming system for the phosphate groups that are attached to adenosine like this. So the first phosphate group is called the alpha phosphate group. The second phosphate group is called the beta phosphate group. And the third phosphate group is called the gamma phosphate group. So we have the alpha, the beta, and the gamma phosphate groups of the adenosine triphosphate molecule. Now, what you're going to do is you're going to cut the bond between the alpha and the beta phosphate group. Okay, so you're going to cut this bond here. Uh, and what that will produce you is two phosphate groups that are linked together like so. And I'll colour these in in purple. Okay, and when you have two phosphate groups linked together like this, this is called pyrophosphate. Okay, and pyrophosphate is often abbreviated to PP for pyrophosphate, and then people put a little I there for inorganic. So it's the same way um, that, well, then this notation is in the same spirit as the notation for a phosphate group where you write PI basically. Okay, so if we just have a single phosphate group that is free within the cytoplasm, people often denote that as PI for inorganic phosphate. Okay, when you've got two of them linked together, people People will abbreviate that to PPI, but the name for it is pyrophosphate. Right, okay, so you produce a pyrophosphate molecule, then you've also got adenosine monophosphate, but you're not going to leave it like that, you're going to actually link this alpha phosphate to the third carbon of the ribose sugars alcohol group, okay, to create this new cycle. So let me draw this picture. So here we have the ribose sugar here again. Okay, like so. Then we've got the adenine organic base off the side. Then we've got the fifth carbon going up here. And then we've got the phosphate group coming off the fifth carbon, which then links to the third carbon down there. Okay, so here is a phosphate group. Here is the uh, ribose sugar in blue here. Okay, and uh, here is the adenine organic base in turquoise here. Okay, and basically we've linked this alpha phosphate which now has a free alcohol group that was involved in binding to the beta phosphate but which upon the hydrolyzing of this bond between those two phosphate groups uh, re regains that uh, free uh, alcohol group and it has then linked that alcohol group with the alcohol group of the third carbon of the ribose sugar down here uh, to create another phosphoester link here and that's created this extra cycle in this structure, this four-membered cycle here and that's why this is called cyclic adenosine monophosphate because of the presence of this extra cycle. Okay, so we have converted adenosine triphosphate into cyclic adenosine monophosphate and pyrophosphate, basically. And that's the cyclase reaction. That's what adenylyl cyclases uh, do. They catalyze this conversion. Okay, right. So, now, there are nine known different adenylyl cyclase enzymes. Or at least there are nine known adenylyl cyclase enzymes which look like this. There is a tenth one as well, but it looks nothing like this. Instead of being implanted in the plasma membrane, it's in the cytoplasm, and we're not going to discuss that. Okay, so, uh, of the uh, adenylyl cyclase enzymes which look like this, uh, there are nine, basically, that are known. Okay, and these are named very nicely and sensibly. Okay, they are named adenylyl cyclase 1, adenylyl cyclase 2. And I'm going to write them all out because we're going to discuss the grouping of these into uh, separate classifications. Okay, then we've got adenylyl cyclase 3, adenylyl cyclase 4, adenylyl cyclase 5. And some people will use the Roman numerals rather than the Latin uh, numbers. Okay, so adenylyl cyclase 6. Oh, actually, I don't know if these are Latin numbers, because you'd think that the Roman numerals would be the Latin, but never mind. Okay, uh, adenylyl cyclase 7, adenylyl cyclase 8, adenylyl cyclase 9. Okay, right. Wherever these numbers came from, uh, I will use the normal numbering systems, but some people will use uh, Roman numerals instead. 
Okay, right. So, here are the nine adenylyl cyclase enzymes, and we now want to discuss the way that people categorize these into uh, four groups. Okay, so basically, adenylyl cyclases are grouped into these four groups. You have group one, group two, group three, and group four. Okay, and oh, whoops, no, missed group three, group four over here. And basically, they all have their sort of colloquial names as well. These are their official boring names, but they also have their colloquial names. Okay, so we'll start with uh, group one, and group one is the calcium activated adenylyl cyclases. Okay, so all of the adenylyl cyclases which are in this group will be activated by an increase in uh, cytoplasmic calcium concentration. So when calcium concentration goes up, these adenylyl cyclases will go from the inactive state where the C1A and the C2A uh, domains are separate to the active state where they're joined together and therefore are catalyzing this conversion of ATP into cyclic AMP. Okay, so this is the kind of colloquial name for group 1 adenylyl cyclases. Now, which of the adenylyl cyclases are within group 1? Okay, well, it is uh, adenylyl cyclase 1 itself is in group 1, adenylyl cyclase 3 is in group 1, and adenylyl cyclase 8 is in group 1. Okay, so I'll also list them out underneath here. So we've got adenylyl cyclase 1, adenylyl cyclase 3, and adenylyl cyclase 8. So all three of these uh, will be activated uh, to produce cyclic AMP in response to an increase in calcium uh, in the local cytoplasm nearby them. Okay, right. Uh, next up, group 2. Okay, group 2 is very, very important for us. Okay, these are going to be stimulated by heterotrimeric G proteins, but not the form you'd think of, okay? When you think of G proteins stimulating adenylyl cyclases, you will no doubt think of alpha subunits stimulating adenylyl cyclases. These are going to be stimulated by G beta gamma subunits, okay? So this is a potentially a bit of new information. So the, this second family is the, whoops, the G beta gamma stimulated family, and I should have left more space here. Right, so the G beta gamma stimulated family. Okay, now which members are, well, which adenylyl cyclases are members of this family? Well, it's adenylyl cyclase 2, adenylyl cyclase 4, and adenylyl cyclase 7. Okay, so all of these ones that I've now underlined in blue here. So in group 2, you have adenylyl cyclase 2, adenylyl cyclase 4, and adenylyl cyclase 7. Okay, and then fine, well, not finally, group 3 next up. Uh, group 3 is uh, inhibited. It's, it's named after what inhibits it. Okay, so it's inhibited by uh, GI, 